Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to TFG Football. Hey, what's up everyone? Here we are and it's the weekend. So what do we talk about on the weekend when the weekend hits, right? Uh, it's the I-League matches that happen. So we today there, there are no matches, uh, luckily. And tomorrow and Sunday, so they have in total four games. The biggest of them all is, of course, East Bengal versus Bengaluru. Now, yesterday we did mention that uh, Sidon Reeds is in Bangalore and he might, you know, he will be talking to FNI about the match. He also touched upon the Fed Cup rumours that are doing the rounds. Uh, it might have 10 teams with, you know, two groups and... Uh, it also says that the home and away, like that's how it was last time. It won't be happening this time. So they talk about that and they also talk a touch upon a bit of uh, relegation, the merger news and also as all's uh, run. So without wasting much time, let them just, you know, take you through the journey, how it has been and the conversation. All right. So I'm in Bangalore. I'm uh, talking to FNI uh, and uh, like what's happening? Why fifth? <laughs> not, not even Arsenal top four. Like he's he's right now wearing an Arsenal shirt. So I don't understand the top four. But what, what's happening? Uh, I think it's been a pretty bad patch for uh, Bangalore FC, and uh, the results are not coming uh, their way. Um, I mean, it look it looks like you know uh, the AFC chapter happened like some <laughs> <laughs> alternate universe, <laughs> <laughs> parallel universe. And suddenly you're like uh, thrown back to reality types. Uh, uh, but uh, again, as uh, you know, I mean, like this is not the reality. But yeah. uh, actually, <laughs> Bangalore what is, is reality. reality. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, they 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 are struggling. They and uh, uh, the team looks like totally out of confidence. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, hopefully they'll pick it up, but uh, again, I League being a very short, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the span is like very short, so it's going to be difficult for them. But uh, I hope uh, a few good results will help them turn around the current oh, rot. Yeah, but it, it just seems like I mean, uh, of course, seven matches without a win for the first time in the history as much as I draw pleasure from that <laughs> I kind of I kind of feel they were unlucky in a few cases like uh, the Minerva draw mm. they are unlucky in that uh, drawing against Aizol against same yeah. and, and after after the Mumbai away game you know I think <clears throat> I think uh, Roka was finally losing it yeah right he, 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 he came in the post-match press conference and he was saying like we did everything we were like creating chances, sending in the crosses, moving up the middle. We did everything other than scoring. scoring so it, it was yeah. just one of those nights where the ball just did not go. In. Yeah. So and I think it, there was a goal line clearance also. Yeah, goal line time. clearance and uh, Mumbai had chances mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but so so do you think uh, the, you know luck is also a factor or uh, this is? I think uh, the. There's that uh, saying, right? I mean, when things go wrong, everything <laughs> tends to go wrong types. So, that's what is happening. And since, I mean, football is also a game about confidence and stuff yeah. like that. When you don't get those results, I think the team starts brooding over uh, that. And, you know, your full potential is not coming out and things like that. But um, also, I feel uh, the... Uh, the problem with the team, I guess, is like probably I feel like there was a bit of complacency after this uh, that AFC run. I mean, like uh, where they did play really well, and yeah. I think a lot of people were expecting to do yeah, I was uh, them to <laughs> yeah, seriously do really well, including me. I was thinking, oh man, I mean, if they're gonna go with this form into I League, they're gonna thrash everybody. But uh, so probably that also set in. And um, as a new coach, Roka probably didn't have a good uh, outlook or rather uh, have a better idea about what is I-League going to be. So, and uh, he came in pretty late and recruited some players for, uh, I think, keeping in mind AFC Cup. And after that, uh, Rubio left. 
Yeah. And what uh, was that? Rubio goes Khabra comes in. Rubio for Khabra. <laughs> and and uh, Rubio is like sitting on his ass at Walla Dolla. He's not playing any games. So yeah, no, why no, couldn't no. they keep him? I, I I don't know what exactly uh, went wrong there. But I yeah. think this, if he was there, I think things would have been much, much Master. better. Because in those all AFC games, I mean, he did... I mean... The role uh, that he played was not very obvious, but you know, but it it was like he was very important in that whole uh, mechanism to work. I mean, it it was something like that, uh, where he was like you know taking control of the midfield and spraying yeah. passes. And now instead of him, we have Lenny Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Lenny is a decent player. I mean, like he's. Uh, I think one of the best box to box kind of uh, midfielders that uh, we have but obviously you can't no, <laughs> compare him with uh, this is this seems Rubio. to be a very big difference between Bengaluru FC of the past and this season is that very poor in the transfer market like, um, look, look three foreigners yeah. they got they got Noralis and they sent him off yeah I Rubio. think yeah. Uh, the recruiting um, uh, for this season did not go really well and if you look at it, they have a huge squad as well. And probably I think some of the players could have been offloaded and that also did not happen. Um, like, I think some of the senior players are now playing in Bangalore Division uh, BDF League. I mean, uh, along with the youngsters which has been playing uh, in the <coughs> BDF League. So... Uh, I don't know what went wrong there, but I, I seriously feel that, you know, uh, not much thought or probably they didn't pick up the right place, especially in midfield, um, because uh, they could have gone for a Rowling who's much younger and has a bigger prospect uh, instead of Lenny. But I think they went uh, behind experience to... Probably thinking that, you know, the, these players are so experienced so they can probably perform well in highly. But that strategy has not worked and I don't know if the coach had any, I mean, serious inputs while selecting these players. That That's also, because obviously he came in pretty late and, and he, has, he would have seen a little bit of ISL. And if you see, most of the players who play in ISL don't replicate the same form in I-League and yeah. vice versa. I mean, as we were discussing just yeah. uh, some time back. Yeah. So, that kind of, like, Sena Ralte came, I mean, he was like bossing in uh, Mumbai City yeah. FC. Yeah. And I would say he was not like really bad with Bangalore FC, but uh, he's not obviously showing that same kind of form. And... Uh, uh, now that we are into the third season of ISL, I don't hear people saying this again and again. I mean, like, the impact of ISL on I-League. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. uh, the, the players who play. And pretty much the Bangalore FC squad uh, has been playing, uh, like, pretty regularly in yeah. ISL. Yeah. And uh, now, you know that, again, because ISL also has a very cramped schedule, now I-League also has a cramped schedule. And I'm sure that is taking a toll on uh, the fitness and the kind of things, uh, uh, you know, the players require to perform at their best. So, that also is probably playing... Um, yeah, probably, probably. I think Ashley Westwood got lucky in that, uh, since that he got one actual season of the league. Yeah. Right, he didn't have any ISL uh, interfering yes. with it. And uh, here uh, comes in Roka, who, uh, who is already like a bit overconfident, I think, because... I interviewed him like before the league started and first question I was asked like, okay, you're already on top of AFC Cup and I-League, so what is the next know, step? Uh, what is the next step? How do you improve on that? Mm. So that, that, that was the level of thinking back then. Mm. Take care. So he comes in, uh, he's playing every three days, he doesn't have enough time to prepare for every opponent and everything uh, and uh, you know, uh, this cramped schedule is going to get more, more cramped than once the AFC Cup group stage kicks yeah. So... What is this? Just just a bad season, a victim of this schizophrenic calendar. So that's what I think. I mean, like uh, I hope. Uh, I mean, I uh, personally, I feel he is a uh, upgrade on Ashley Westwood in terms of coaching. I mean, there is no question about it. Uh, but I think he did not have enough time, and he did not have a good idea about what I-League is going to offer. I mean, in terms of um, the requirements. Yeah. And probably, uh, he didn't have much say. Obviously, he didn't know 
uh, you, you wouldn't have known a lot of players who were in, uh, playing in India. So, probably he also did not have a say in the recruitment of players. So, he has to uh, play with the kind of, uh, you know, players that is at his disposal, that is probably recruited by somebody else. And <laughs> I guess we will see a much better season next time around yeah. from him because he will have a better say uh, in terms of player selections and he will also have an idea about you know what i league is all about and yeah. what exactly it is i mean what if, are the if challenges it's still i league yeah <laughs> if it is still i league yeah so but but one of the things i have actually missed about bengaluru is that the guts mm. that used to come with ashley mesu the freaking brash arrogant guts that they used to go out with and they used to pull off like these unbelievable comebacks like the afc cup group stage last yeah. season yeah. like right at the bottom and suddenly they are yeah. you know, all the way to the final i mean uh, all, obviously roka has uh, a lot of credit in that but that turnaround was patent dashley was good here it seems like he comes in with a more calculative approach which is where it seems like you know that extra bit is missing i mean <laughs> yeah actually yes i i mean the playing style also with ashley was like uh, was more, more, more in, yeah. intense and you could see him egging on from the sidelines always yeah. i mean like he's like shouting instructions yeah, all, but, the, all uh, the commentators used to get uh, you know <laughs> embarrassed when all his choice words used to get captured yeah so the thing is like that was his style and i think um, the squad as such probably was not like had a lot of aggressive players or something like that <laughs> yeah. but he could create an attitude in that team and uh, and i think what worked for him uh, was also that and that's one of the reasons i think he could feel a lot of youngsters uh, you know uh, charging them up and trying to get their result and we don't see that happening quite frequent yeah. um, as you said roka is a much more calculated uh, i mean calculative approach kind of uh, yeah and uh, that's what that's what it seems like them i mean uh, bengaluru fc used to grind out these results you know one yeah, goal wins from adverse situations this time a little bit the last time seven games always just shot yeah just that extra bit is missing going back down to east bengal yeah yeah i mean what happens you le- you leave out uh, robin singh and suddenly he comes back with a vengeance yeah i know <laughs> i mean that uh, match over there uh, some dark cards yeah. from uh, mehtab <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually turned that match uh, around yeah and uh, it was quite uh, surprising to see the team getting drawn into that i yeah. mean like I, i mean knowing mehtab and watching him i am sure all these players would be knowing what he is capable of yeah. and he did exactly what was expected of him in that match and till then bfc was playing pretty decent i mean even though uh, they probably do not do not score that goal or they did score one goal at that time i guess i mean yeah. uh, actually the, he's been all came back from behind yeah, yeah. so yeah. ck vinit scored the, the goal Yeah. and then uh, mehtab did this and i think that the whole team got sucked into that ploy i yeah. mean like and uh, and mehtab obviously knew what he was doing because that that match especially i know mm-hmm. i remember that the referee was not very experienced yeah. and there was a huge crowd and he did that uh, and the team uh, got totally rattled and then eventual 2-1 loss to but uh, if you see a um, lot of those uh, problems i mean like in the sense which they are facing now got exposed uh, in that match right. i mean like they were playing a high line uh, like juaran got not make by yeah. plaza yeah. even though that guy was like uh, some four five cha- open chances in that yeah. match but um, you know so it it was like uh, it, it, it was like a dissection of uh, the kind of tactics uh, the team was employing and uh, it was like a template for rest of the teams to follow <laughs> <Yeah>. what to do <laughs> what you should be doing to uh, uh, you know uh, counter bangalore fc and uh, in the next uh, very next match yeah churchill brothers churchill brothers match. just did that i mean like, it was yeah. so obvious they were doing the same thing <laughs> this would not work against Ashley Westwood. Yeah, I yeah. know. 
this would not uh, yeah. so i think um, that's a kind of attitude that he brings and um, uh, i mean actually brought into the team yeah so but i think right now uh, with uh, east bengal's dip in form or yeah. rather uh, yeah, they just try out main thread yeah so they are struggling to get that results and there are like some rumors about some discomfort in the dressing oh, yeah, room yeah, yeah, and of course uh, no i mean uh, morgan has been saying that there is external pressure on the team okay, yeah so i think uh, the east bengal secretary made some statements yeah. <laughs> but i'm not sure but uh, i mean uh, i mean we we are again i am relying on uh, yeah um, newspaper reports and translated reports from <laughs> bengali so i don't know uh, whether it is correct or not but i think it's uh, probably a right time to uh, you know um, play them and get that result and hopefully uh, we'll see a good crowd also yeah, i actually i actually heard uh, morgan might resign but i i, I think like that's exaggerated yeah. that should not happen at this point <laughs> especially when you top of the table what are you talking about ah, i don't know i mean like some, come on just three results or two or three results just went wrong went against <laughs> you and then there are uh, this is this is the derby effect you don't win the derby everything comes down <laughs> especially because east bengal have the more pressure now you know they they have to win the league 13 years 14 yeah. years they haven't won it so it was on them it was siliguri as well mm-hmm. they are 10 and there they don't get don't, don't win against mohan bagan obviously it's going to come down so so i think it's a right time to play them and right time to nick a win for mangalore fc with yeah. the crowd support and uh, and i'm sure uh, after what happened in the first <laughs> match uh, and uh, all uh, i mean like so the the fans here are like totally charged up yeah. about this uh, this match and they try they going to back the team to hill so i think uh the team is going to respond to that and probably get that win so so do you think the international break is going to help with that it, it depends the kind of players who, who are going to get called to that uh, everybody is going to get uh, sunil yujinson nodanta all the all the key players mm. will be there yeah i know so again i i don't know how helpful it is going to be but probably it might be a break from uh, the kind of uh, monotonous things that yeah. is happening in i league i mean like in terms of their wins and all those stuff so probably the break might uh, help them Total yeah <laughs> yeah it, it it's going to be like three days every uh, game and suddenly one month nothing yeah so yeah it's going to be a bit disruptive so i'm going to come down to cups now uh, we just heard a uh, rumor that federation cup is going back to that old format old format makes sense to you or this is just seems to me they just want to make it shorter no i mean last season i mean we all know that they they, they had taken a decision that they're going to scrap the cup all together yeah, yeah so i think last season again because uh, the teams did not have the requisite numbers to represent an afc they uh, yeah, yeah they had to do it. <laughs> they had yeah. to do it so again i guess the with a kind of attitude towards i league i think the federation is not at all probably uh, you know interested in the whole affair yeah. it, it looks so laxidel from their uh, approach i mean like the way the i league handle works on yeah. social media uh, the updates everything yeah. so it's i mean they don't seem to be like interested in this yeah. so it's unfortunate because it's it's like uh, like a, i mean the federation cup has been like a big fixture uh, in india yeah. yeah in the indian football and uh, it's unfortunate to see that you know it's losing its, uh, they they are not giving the it's not product. losing its popularity i mean last season we saw yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, bengaluru aizol shillong kolkata everywhere people turned down mm. even like 6000 people traveled mm. just because like guwahati again like they 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 saying they're going to do it in guwahati what it's the worst possible stadium mm. to do it right now because they don't promote it so mm. it's, it's going to be empty and they're going to mm. go and say like okay this looks empty stadium we're going <laughs> to cancel this uh, cup i think this they're doing this because they want to bring in indian super cup and they don't want anybody to complain so they can yeah. show empty stadiums because look at this uh, 10 clubs they're saying two groups it's yeah. the number of matches is much higher mm. uh, if uh, from other than like if they do just a 18 knockout tournament yeah 
it's going to get less spectatorship it, it's going to like completely knacker the players it, it's going to be crammed as hell because you got uh, uh, com- uh, what's there you got afc cup matches yeah. in the middle of it like mohan bagan and uh, bengaluru city will have to travel to play afc cup in the middle of the tournament i don't know how they're going to fit that out it's just going to be a mess if they do it like this but and 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 next season they say indian super cup will replace uh, federation cup that is going to be knockout home away yeah uske liye theek hai only this this one has problem i know i mean like see the thing is like we we keep hearing a lot of news i mean at the end of the day i think the federation is just going through the motions of yeah, i mean no. like uh, they are just uh, every time uh, somebody from the federation comes and tells you know there are like so many teams who want to take part in uh, in the yeah. competitions it's not like uh, you know couple of clubs go shutting down is going to affect yeah. and every day we keep hearing some club or the other defaulting player salary is yeah. not giving travel allowance they're not yeah. providing the right see if this is what you want to promote i mean you inducting teams without any check you just doing it for the sake of it and yeah. you because you just want to dra- brag about it telling the yeah. rose there are so many clubs uh, in line but that's not the right attitude right i mean if they are um, really interested in promoting the sport in this country they should go through the right kind of checks and right kind of um, you know clubs should be brought in and that yeah. is not happening and i think even with the federation cup this is yeah. uh, the the whole power game as you know uh, shifted to somewhere else yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> no i mean just look at the i league scenario everybody knew the clubs were going to pull out mm. for months yeah i know yeah, and <laughs> but still the new clubs come in on 12 days notice so it's it's just like it doesn't even seem badly planned it seems like like it has to be deliberate you can't yeah. mess it up so badly unless you i don't want care to. <laughs> i i don't think they care at all i mean like if uh, if they did um i mean like as you said i mean these goan clubs going out i mean it's like uh, open oh, 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 secret yeah and other than uh, the yeah and then uh, i don't i mean like you uh, you don't give much time for the clubs to come come in prepare themselves nothing and i also heard that uh, uh, some of these clubs because they are very inexperienced in fielding teams and taking part in a, a competition uh, uh, on the scale like uh, so they're doing lot of mistakes like you know pre match conferences yeah. not being held correctly and all that and they have is like going on slapping fines on them uh, i'm not i'm not going to i'm not going to name the club but uh, one pre match press conference i attended they brought in that backdrop late you know the, the branded backdrop that they have mm. they bra- brought it late uh, and they had to actually wait till the backdrop was there because otherwise you couldn't allow people to take pictures so they brought it in then they realized they didn't have anything to hang it on so one guy was holding it <laughs> back to behind and they then like after another 10 minutes they brought in a nail and they hammered it out to the freaking wall no so uh, the thing is like uh i think uh, this is more the major league of the yeah. country and you are inducting teams uh, at the 11th hour times and you know you are allowing uh, these teams in and they know they are not prepared yeah. and then i heard that you go on slapping fines because yeah. they are not doing it right yeah. i mean it, it looks totally ridiculous it's it looks like a scam money making yeah. <laughs> scheme dude i mean, I mean the, the clubs who are coming into the top division are getting screwed as well because they're going to get relegated no matter what they do yeah that's so, what uh, it's like uh, that's again when when the whole uh, yeah, yeah. uh induction of new clubs were happening it's like you are paying like a yeah. huge amount of security just to get relegated no, just one, one one crore like not 100 no i'm telling i mean yeah. if that uh, that amount was not reduced and if they were looking for that kind of security yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, you are paying a huge sum to just to get relegated i mean it look like just, just imagine go. just imagine look at isol fc this time yeah top 3 brilliant run yeah they going to get relegated when the merger happens i know yeah. i mean it's it's cruel actually it's yeah. uh, it's so stupid and uh, i mean 
Aizawal uh, made all the right moves this time. Yeah. That's what I feel, and yeah. uh, and, and and they showed same thing with Royal Wine though. Like came in, became like top three, top four in the league. Then they were preparing a ten crore budget for the next season. They realized they were going to get really yeah. But apparently, only eight stay. It will have only one club. Yeah, yeah one. <laughs> <laughs> what nonsense! I mean, like I, I don't even understand what's the logic behind it. I mean, like we saw the kind of support yeah. uh, Izawal is getting, and uh, these again, yeah. the, the some some guy or the other who just yeah. came a couple of years back uh, making statements like you know, okay, only <laughs> states will have only yeah. one club. But I think you know the power, as we were saying, yeah. uh, we were talking. Uh, the power center has, has shifted, shifted yeah. and uh, uh, the federation is just uh, just going through motions. You know what I what I like the the devil in me wants to happen. It's like of course I want Mohan Bagan to win the league and the cup, but I want Idol FC to come second because then they get an AFC Cup spot. Yeah. Let's see how you relegate them now. <laughs> like <laughs> they are playing in Asia, but you want them to play in League One. How like? Have you no shame? That that's I think like the the. Uh, I mean, it's going to be criminal, you know, uh, doing such things uh, because I think they made all the right moves as we were saying, like yeah. uh, in terms of the coach, in terms of the player recruitment, whatever they have done, they have brought it. Like I mean, some thought has definitely gone in there, and all their uh, like the foreign recruit Amna, um, JS Rani. Ashutosh, all these uh, newcomers to the team, so everything has worked out in favor for them, and uh, they are having a fine run. And one fine morning, if you're going and saying that you're going to play in league one, I think that's the biggest stupidity. Uh, uh, it's it's also probably one of the populist cl- popular clubs in the country. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like people are taking to it like crazy. Where when we are seeing like. Senior journalists yeah. uh, are writing stories about you know I haven't followed I League so far but uh, yeah, so uh, this is been, really yeah I, I, the the Aizawal story is making me follow I League so that means there's something in there which you can tap into it's, it's uh, beautiful and you, you you have to go there actually you have to go and see one match it's like surreal <laughs> and uh, the Freaking stadium is not full. Yeah, I know. They, they, they need to like make the gallery around all the match. I think that the, the full capacity should be around forty-five yeah. thousand. It will be full again. Yeah, I'm sure. People, people don't get tickets. They just sit on the hills. Yeah. Because they can't find tickets. So it's going to be crazy. But of course, Northeast United apparently represents eight states out of God. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like some <laughs> tourism ad advertisement or something. <laughs> like eight states, one club or something. Oh, yeah. I think. That's going to be the serious injustice, right? I mean, like, um, um, where football is thriving, you are not taking the game there. Yeah, and uh, you are just trying to, you know, um, consolidate everything into some some entity, which is again operating from one city, which is probably like the gateway to the whole Northeast. I mean, like, it's, it's not it's, even it Northeast there. Like right? Northeast, yeah. yeah, that's what, it's not even there in the Northeast. It's the Shiliguri of Northeast, that's what I say. <laughs> So, I think these are all things that, uh, you know, the federation should uh, address. Yeah. I mean, and they shouldn't kill uh, football that is like thriving and football that is growing as well. I yeah. mean, like, we, we saw, I mean, like, the whole uh, internet is awash with pictures of Ejwal FC's fans now and uh, how they are supporting the team, uh, all these things. And all of a sudden, you're like uh, going there and telling... Okay, yeah. now you will play the second division. Okay, unlike, unlike a super unlucky club, like didn't finish bottom of the table, had to be relegated, had to be brought back. Like after being relegated, yeah. that cup run. This is a cup team. I'm telling you, we're, we're gonna see some upsets from them yeah. in the cup. Well, yes, that was a long, long, long conversation. Now there were so many things that they touched upon, right? Uh, now leaving, uh, taking from what where they left, uh, they were talking about Azol's great run in this season. So let's talk about their match uh, that's happening on the same day as tomorrow. Uh, it's the first match that's kicking off the weekend. Now it's a two o'clock kick off. Azol play Chennai. Now, if you folks remember, all the football fans out there remember, Azol had their first defeat against Chennai. In Chennai's home ground. So, how does this look, Kevin? Uh, it's as all's home. So, you know, Chennai all, with all the surprise wins and not too many wins. Okay? Yeah. Just one win against, uh, uh, surprise win against 
as well. Uh, this is not going to be easy for them. And uh, by going by uh, as well's home record, they've not dropped points. And yeah, they even defeated. They also handed over first defeat to East Bengal. Yeah, so you know, it's not going to be anything close to being an easy ride for Chennai City. Yes, uh, they have some hope. with that confidence of having that uh, the great first half that been playing all season hmm. Hmm. if they can convert that or they can just see the entire game with that spirit they can hold on to uh, a, a drop may possibly hmm. uh, and and as all well, only problem is uh, they not able to score too many goals yeah they 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 all the games have been low scoring games yeah. so this can be one chance where chennai city can uh, take confidence and uh, by the way they've uh, beaten them hmm. once at their home ground this can be that slight ray of hope that they keep in mind to come into this game hmm. uh, uh, as all will be uh, taking this game not lightly at all because they're just one one behind the league leaders and uh, uh, dropping points at this is going to be crucial you know yeah. you know it's it can just give give the upper hand to mohan bagan because they're not playing this weekend right so they already had one game in hand so it will become two in hand hmm. it will going to be it's going to be much easier for mohan mohan bagan if as all drop points today yeah yeah so i mean uh, tomorrow yeah <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to pick a winner you would clearly pick as well as a winner no, i i don't have any favorites so okay. yaar um, i'm just looking for a a good finish to this season hmm. uh, anyways uh, we don't know who's going to finish top or yeah. who's going to be It's relegated in, yeah. because the bottom part is even even the bottom of the table is even more interesting hmm. you have dsk you been. have uh, <laughs> chennai city and you have another team uh, mumbai <laughs> no 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 another team this is a uh, exam from the uh, minerva who's hmm. exam from relegation so it's going to be you know the 6th and 7th position that it's going to be very tight and yeah mumbai is uh, very much up for that <laughs> so uh, not really a a, a, a favorite choosing uh, over here but i would like to see more goals being scored by azol if they are <coughs> if they are likely to go further hmm. in this game in hmm. this season okay okay now we are, they've already spoken uh, unni and chiranjeet have already spoken about other game the bengaluru east bengal but if you if what would you pick whom would you pick your winner as ah this, Or this are is you going to pick over <laughs> the way uh, bengaluru have uh, approached this game uh, lighting up uh, the entire you know social media with their tweets hmm. and their promotion activities that they've been doing they also want the whole city is with all of their posters yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they 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 are this passionate uh, group that they want everybody to come for them hmm. and and they they have shown that in during the afc campaign as well yeah, they want yeah. the entire packing on their side to and they look forward to that mm-hmm. you, you know so that that for me is uh, their strength bengaluru hmm. even if they are not having a good run uh, they have the packing from the fans yeah So, so do you think it's a redemption time for both the teams looking yes, for a win? Yes, very much. See, uh, each Bengal have been doing very well, but off <laughs> lately they've lost that that touch in front hmm. of goal. Uh, this could be the time, but uh, okay. Bengaluru, you know, not easy. It, it, it's, you just cannot put them out. You know yeah. that that is the beauty of this game. You cannot write anybody off. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, do you also think uh, the other matches that are going to happen on Sunday, even those teams are likely not to put off, you know, not to be written off. Uh, the first game on Sunday is uh, Churchill versus DSK uh, in Churchill. Do you are you going to favor the Goan team? No, no, not even uh, close to anybody's uh, favorites over here. Churchill, they've not played the best of. Uh, uh, they've, they've never really looked like scoring hmm. unless uh, there's a couple of uh, free kicks that. Uh, or set pieces that uh, have gone in uh, especially yeah. adil khan or a brandon uh, moment so dsk are looking very strong over here even though they're playing at goa hmm. so dsk have the upper, upper hand I and mean, this, this. yeah and i hope they able to score some goals yeah because okay. they they are a team that sh- that has shown good creating creating of chances in front of goal hmm. Hmm. i hope they able to convert them hmm. Now that's some positive news for Dave Rogers. Here you have a support in the studio from us. Uh, the last match that ends the weekend is uh, at Coopridge, Mumbai versus Minerva. Now, just like Azol handed their first uh, defeat, you know, uh, to East Bengal, they had a victory over them of the season. The same way Minerva had tasted uh, success. The first match that they won of the season was against 
Mumbai FC in at their home ground but now the tables have ch- changed Mumbai is hosting this game now if you remember that match as well they were on a four game uh, loss uh, in Mumbai and everybody was like okay this is a chance to come back it's been a while you know mm-hmm. probably that was the attitude of the whole team and the coach so that's where they faltered they gave the goal we've always spoken about this the moment they score they also are good to concede as well you know so the opposite team shouldn't be worried when the team scores because they like hamara chance bhi aayega <laughs> so what do you see here we've seen them play against mohan bagan which was for me at least i consider as the best performance from mumbai fc this season we also saw them against bengaluru fc both goalless draw but bengaluru fc they could have been a bit more better it was still like a weak side uh, both were weak side there was no mm-hmm. good in both the sides now here is a team narva who has been struggling okay but they have nothing to lose and mumbai fc have everything to lose <laughs> so <laughs> what do you see here Uh, Minerva uh, you, you can't forget the last game they were involved in hmm. nine goals yeah you know they they are capable uh, but it was and Churchill. they were on the winning side yeah, yeah. <laughs> very much and uh, it's difficult that the cooperage as we all know uh, the ground conditions and uh, the size the, of the, the ground the size of the ground does uh, put a lot of emphasis on your your v- uh, central player rather than right. wing player so the it, it becomes a little more compact rather than uh, those wide grounds that we are there, all the teams are used to hmm. so minerva to have a good chance to not concede okay. in this game okay you know because uh, mumbai are not uh, a goal scoring machine hmm. as of now hmm. so they they can uh, grind out this draw and probably say it's a good result for them minerva i'm talking hmm. about for but for mumbai they, they there's no draw there's no loss at least they they are in need of three points and they desperately. need <laughs> desperately i was about to say convincingly but that would be totally wrong it's yeah. <laughs> more desperate than con- you know that uh, confidence booster it's yeah. just one one thing on their mind they have to get all wins convincingly and at this point of time i do not see uh, uh, th- their defense standing out hmm. mumbai they've been conceding goals like anything even if they've not uh, scored too many goals they've been just conceding consistently yeah that that's a worry for them yeah. you know uh, have they haven't kept clean sheets even though uh, katimani has been good in the goal hmm. um, they've hit the goal goal uh, far the crossbar and the goal post but uh, all in all they are not a com- complete team hmm. still hmm. yeah okay. so i think they need to work on their defense which they ha- have been we've seen them do this to new entrants but they also need to uh, finish those goals you know where everyone is missing on the goal post and everything and this is one chance i guess they need to capitalize on this or else this I mean, there, then there will be no excuses, or there will be nothing to say left to say. Even mm. though Kasha will say something, uh, but that's how the team looks like now. Now that's all, folks. For today, uh, a very long, extensive show here. Uh, I think whenever we hit, hit the weekend, it tends to happen because there's so many, so many things to touch upon. Uh, so that's all, guys. Hope you enjoy the show. Uh, shout out to F and I. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Uh, and we are on Twitter, so you can talk to us. Shiranjit, that's Shiranjit Oja. Boza underscore Kevin. So just make your name. for f9 you know at the rate of fni if you're listening to our show on youtube hit the like share subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon so you get updates of our new episode you can also listen to our podcast on audio boom sound cloud itunes and various other podcasting apps have a great weekend come back to us next week cheers Hey man, just help me out, man. I need some, I need some podcast, man. I haven't had a fix in a week. Just need some. Don't you worry about it. I got podcast galore for you, man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, man. I'm gonna check it out.